on September 17th, Ron Paul won the California straw poll by 49% in a field of approximately eight competitors, with Rick Perry at 29%, Michelle Bachman, who attended, only getting 8%. So in my view, we are within striking distance of the White House, and if we are going to get progressives and left libertarians and Jeffersonians on board, there are two things we need. One is we need to define the Jeffersonian or libertarian or small government uh, ladder of opportunity or safety net. I hate to use buzzwords, but we need to convince the poor and the middle class that they're not going to simply see greater wealth concentration occur with fewer regulations. The case has not been made, and we don't have much time to make it. We have about 30 days to make it. The second thing, and this would be highly destructive to do if you can't define this safety net, which is 50 safety nets in a libertarian model or more. It's going to be a number of different models, because that's what liberty gives us, a chance to choose. We can choose different models. Uh, we may have to vote with our feet at times. So um, the second issue is to appoint a, uh, a progressive as the vice president. You take it from the honest man of Ron Paul, who doesn't lie, doesn't back down, and doesn't prevaricate, doesn't change his positions, and says the truth even when he gets booed. God bless him, whether you believe in God or not. And uh, Paul and uh, Dennis Kucinich. You know, there are other guys in the Democratic Party, but Kucinich clearly stands out as the most fearless. You know, he was a third-string quarterback on his high school football team, and he's about five foot two or five foot three. Um, he's a plucky man, and I've never seen him sell anybody out. And after we got sold out this badly by Obama, and I would argue by Bush as well, and every one of them, really, they can define what it is they're going to do, and it holds up to criticism. It'll reassure the conservatives that would, would find Kucinich normally odious, perhaps, some of them, and on the progressive side, reassure them because some of them think Ron Paul is way too extreme. So, uh, we need to show how we're going to propel America into a new age of progress, when where we can finally get rid of a society based on fear-mongering um, and poverty maintenance systems, which Ron Paul calls a warfare welfare state, and actually have a, a ladder of opportunity that doesn't rot, and doesn't get pulled out from under you. So Ron Paul is a smart man, everybody agrees about that, uh, and he has a very principled man, and his principles, I'm not talking about his moral principles, I mean his principles of economic analysis, um, are support many different visions of the future, um, because it's a message of liberty and choice. But people are worried that the liberty will up only being for the rich, and that is why having a, a clearly defined vision followed by or at the same time as a Kucinich appointment could be extremely powerful. We have to show in concrete terms what a libertarian society or a, a small government society of wealth creation would look like because you can't just do it by dismantling the current system. You have to build something new in its place. Um, and you don't, it doesn't mean that Ron Paul has to build it, but he has to lay out what are people to do. He has to give them some building plans for the new economy, because it isn't just going backwards. We're in the 21st century. <clears throat> so um, we need a clear program about the libertarian safety net. And uh, these two men, they aren't going to sell you out. They have hearts of gold and iron. And... Um, so we need to develop the financial model that will assure the poor and the working class that this is their best way forward. And not because they have no other options. That's actually a good way in and of itself. All the others uh, who are in the race will continue the current trends of the top 1%, not only getting everything and more, but now they're getting your grandkids' money because of the way the deficits are funneling money into these companies. And the top 1% are getting your civil liberties because they control the political system. So when you sacrifice your liberties, they don't go into the air, they concentrate into their hands. So they're also taking your rights and putting them in their pocket. So California is Ron Paul's to win or lose now if he either has already figured this out or listens to my message. 
you, you could have this state. And you need to pre-announce this right away because it takes a long time for people to cross into the Republican primary. To the, unfortunately, we have to change our registration. I'm a Libertarian Party member right at the moment. I have to change to become a Republican to vote for a Libertarian. So, uh, and then I was a Democrat before, uh, so it would be the same case for them. So when we pre-announce, you know, we, we can defeat the corrupt, mediocre establishment politicians like Obama. And I'm sorry to say that about Barack Obama. I campaign for him ardently. But uh, the, uh, those who feel betrayed and let down are sometimes uh, the people with the greatest amount of anger. And this is going to take a lot of work. <clears throat> we need to demonstrate both laissez-faire models that eradicate poverty and uh, communitarian models and the range between. So the basic thesis is this. In business, you want to make a profit. So the less jobs you have in your company and still produce the product correctly, the more efficient you are, the wiser you are, and the better you are. Whereas in government, it's the opposite. The more jobs you create, to create the same product, the better you are. Now that's a bit of an exaggeration, but the tendency of government is full employment, whether it's efficient or not. The tendency of business is zero employment because as employment goes down, dividends should go up. Um, so if the workers uh, who form enterprises that are community-based have stock in them, like for example, the Plymouth Bay Company of the Pilgrims, or Amana, uh, as a la Amana Radar Range, or Oneida, if you'd been involved in any of those projects, you would have been filthy rich uh, because they were all wildly successful and they all involved community contracts of sweat equity. Uh, and in Silicon Valley, you might have to work 16 years, do four startups for four years each. But most guys, if they do three or four startups, so they're not completely stupid about which ones they pick, will eventually get some uh, serious money. Um, and unfortunately, some do work the 16 years and go from one failure to another because of mismanagement and greed uh, or just uh, bad luck. So uh, it's not there's no one size fit all. But I think that what we need to do is develop models for uh, employee-owned enterprises because uh, then the next problem is, well, what happens if the competitor uh, doesn't pay out the dividends nor the employees? And uh, you can't solve, I can't solve all the problems of competition overnight. I want to lay out some ideas. I'm hoping other people will flesh all of this out because uh, we have, in my opinion, 30 days to come up with the Libertarian Safety Net and Opportunity Ladder. And this will make uh, Jefferson, Reagan, Martin Luther King, and Kennedy all proud if we can do this. Yeah, we can take the honesty of the progressives and of the small government Republicans, because in my family we had both, uh, you know, reflecting on my own circumstances, uh, and it would be great to have it uh, fit together and, and not fit together with theft, theft of the public's money and um, fraud. So we need to articulate this 21st century method of uh, the people, poor and middle class people, having housing security, which in my view is to develop a model where people don't owe any debt on their houses and there are no taxes on their houses. So basically, when you get a place, it's yours forever and you don't have to do anything. Um, then there's a medical care model. So the problem with our medical care that's easy to fix is three parts. One is if you build a community-based uh, healthcare clinic system, you don't have to have layers of insurance on it, um, and you can and you can focus on keeping people healthy. If you have a cooperative agriculture where you're eating a lot of things like raw, whole food that's uh, that's safe and uh, it's it's good. You eat that stuff, you feel great. Uh, I wasn't into it until I went off for a week and lived at this place that had it, and I lost a lot of weight and I felt a lot better. You know, giant plates of uh, barbecued uh, marinated artichoke and asparagus that was locally grown. Um, you can eat whatever you want, but people, uh, the problem we have is that people are too obese, they don't get enough exercise, 
And on the third problem is that they're stressed out, they don't have any time. So we lower the stress by creating these community institutions that are opt-in and you, you don't have a right to them. Um, because if you create a right to them, then you create a mediocrity. You have to take on the mediocre. So this is difficult stuff, but we can do a lot better than we're doing now. So your medical co costs go way down if you do a clinic. You cook the clinic into a cooperative education system. We have a public education system. I'm suggesting something where people have equity in their education system, and it goes K all the way to PhD, and that it's affiliated with this healthcare network. And you could cut your costs 80, 90 percent, because what we're focusing on is getting rid of the costs, not creating jobs. Because if you have access to healthcare, because you're a member of a healthcare co-op, you have access to education, because you're a member of a health education co-op, and because your community is uh, providing education and healthcare to its citizens, then you can kick the taxes off. And then as soon as you fail, you, you fail under the current system's averages, your taxes will go right back in. So there's a mechanism for people to say, well, what if, uh, you know, uh, these libertarians just cart everything off uh, and make it, uh, you know, a survival of the fittest system. So you can combine efficiencies of the market and market constructions to create high quality institutions that people have equity in. That's the ideal. Uh, you basically take the Silicon Valley startup model, tweak it quite a bit, uh, and, uh, and you come up with some interesting ideas. And in terms of prototyping, I talked about a few of these ideas from the old times, and I think uh, Silicon Valley would be a great place to implement this kind of thing. But again, uh, we need more than just me working on it, and it has to be done right away. <clears throat> so we have this fundamental conflict between the business wanting to reduce work and then pay the dividends out, but the people who were doing the jobs don't have the stock to get the dividends. So we try to match the guy who's doing the production with the uh, dividends from the efficiency. So if he unemploys himself, the net effect to him is virtually zero. He's still getting the same income stream. Now, <clears throat> let's see here. So we have so by reducing the stress, because we have access to the things you need, education, healthcare, food, and housing, um, and you don't have to work very much to maintain them, because actually, if you study the economy, you got warfare, welfare, corrections. Uh, excessive levels of insurance bureaucracy, excessive levels of healthcare bureaucracy, excessive levels of corporate bureaucracy, corporate profits and CEO bonuses. They get 50 cents for every dollar a worker gets paid. You don't have to structurally build that into your model. You don't have to pay 50% overhead on every employee. You can be more efficient than the big corporations. But there are certain things you're going to want to buy from them. But you shouldn't want to buy things that you can rebuild your manufacturing base on. Uh, and uh, yes, it will cost more, but if you do a co-op model and you have some local philanthropists that are willing to sign up and you pick the right industries, you can maintain a culture built around making things, which also is good for people's uh, hearts and minds. So uh, basically, I think that's about it. Um, so uh, good night and good luck and let's get Ron Paul elected and I believe Kucinich is the correct uh, vice president candidate and I think it should be announced immediately and let's get California. Ciao.